so we're about to enter into combat. You move these stones and you threatened Captain Zarkon, this Deveronian Nihil, who has only grown in hatred for the three of you, specifically not just the Jedi. Zarkon has attacked this temple, your home, in an effort to not just hurt you and kill you, but to kind of to conquer for the Nihil and to kind of destroy the Jedi on an emotional level. Sarkon, closest to these moving rocks, bats some aside with his hand and says, <laughs> There you are, Jedi. I knew I'd find you eventually. Thank you for joining us down here. Now, if you would be so kind, won't you please submit to the Nihil and meet your fate? That was my line. <laughs> <laughs> I told you we were coming for you. Are we rolling initiative now? I think we're rolling initiative. It's three advantages, two successes. Uh, two successes, two advantages. And for reference, I have my force die committed to upgrade the difficulty of attacks against me once per round. Four successes, two advantages for the master. Okay. Three successes, three advantages. What happens when we let go of all of these rocks, though? I'm not holding any of these rocks. Yeah, no, throw them. Yeah, but I want to let go of them and then grab the hostages. Hmm. Mm. You you might want to put the rocks somewhere quickly, safely, and then not pull yeah, the hostages through a bunch of falling rocks. Maybe just throw them at the minions. Yeah. I'm, I'm secretly hoping that you'll throw Bekros at Zarkon again. No. The hostages. Perfect. This is perfect. Okay. The four Jedi are going to have the first turn. But I'm going to use my triumph. And I'm also just going to flip because I don't flip enough darks. As Captain Zarkon says his his final non-negotiable words to these Jedi, he holds out a hand to you and clicks a button. The closest Nihil to you looks around panicked as a uh, beeping counts down. This Nihil is holding one of the detonators and it's going to explode. The Nihil looks panicked and probably a bit betrayed by his captain. And we're going to start combat. The four of you, including Master Zarias, are going to go and then everyone else after that. So you get to decide who goes first and we'll see what happens. Becros is going to sprint for the blinking timing explosive and disarm that as quickly as possible. Lodi is going to throw the rocks at minions after Backrose does the thing. Kel's going to go straight for Zircon. I think Master Zarias is in some, is sort of in a in a, a daze right now and is only reaching the the world around her through the forest. We should probably roll her first dark side one light side point we all can feel her reaching out with the force um to the the people who she knows in the room the the comforting presence of of Lodi Beckros and Kel and I think we can feel her reaching out but are unable to connect with her technically she's is in fact reaching out with this power but only to people in engaged range so we, we can tell that she, she knows we're here and that she is trying to help, but is unable to help at the moment. She's at least keeping Gleedo from freaking out, hopefully. Yeah. I think Gleedo's probably got like a sock in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> it's proboscis. Yeah. So who's first? I think I should get the rocks out of the way. And by out of the way, you mean in one of these Niles' faces? Multiple of their faces, hopefully. I mean, it was, so it was four light side pips before. Yeah. And we narratively had it be like a whole bunch of rocks threatening. Do I need to roll again in order to throw them? Or do I just throw them? 
I think technically you need to roll a ranged attack. Okay. So just two green die? It is. There's a specific difficulty. A ranged combat check combined with a move power check. The attack's difficulty is equal to the silhouette of the object being thrown instead of the normal difficulty. So it's a ranged, probably heavy, against... There's silhouette one rocks, silhouette yeah, zero rocks. There's many of them, though. There's many of them. them silhouette two? I, I think altogether they equal a large silhouette, I would say. So two, three... The bigger they are, the more damage they do, that right? That is very true. Ten times the silhouette. Yeah. So I guess just choose your own difficulty. I choose three. Okay. You have a ranged heavy that'll compensate for that three? No. Cool. Just two green die. Does it become gunnery at that point? (laughs) I mean, you get to add your force die and you could flip because we've got two. Only two, Doug. Only got two dark side, two light side points. No, I'm not going to flip. So I've got two green die, three purple die and two force die. Griffin Darkseid, that's at least one advantage. <laughs> so that's one success. Okay. How does that success translate to injuring these these Nihil? So I'm targeting the minions. Mm-hmm. And my thought is basically the way I had them cinematically before is they were spread out mostly above. Mm-hmm. And Lodi just sort of focuses them on the Nihil in the back Mm -hmm. the minions only one success i don't know how many minions i'm hitting maybe just one minion group how do we calculate damage done you think it's it was yeah silhouette times 10 so 30 so one success is 30 damage (laughs) (laughs) to five to five different night hill yeah it's it's split up over five, so it's like six six points per night hill. <laughs> yeah, you get to subtract their five total. So, what's so it's really heck? only like it's twenty five damage. Twenty five damage to five night hill. Yeah, I I'm I need to like think on this. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just five damage each? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, I think I got a whole minion group. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I need to think on it because I need to prepare myself to speak on what's just happened. So these, you you you're gonna you can tell us what happens. Okay. But five night Nihil are like down from this attack. I have a slight narrative request, if I may. I think Beckros is he's running towards the explosive and asks Lodi, Lodi, clear path, and then all hell breaks loose. With the rocks. Uh, Yeah, all those rocks that I was holding up in the air, I just throw back at five particular Nihil. I'm just like, like, okay. Form a wall and just like slam them into the side wall of the cave. Is it a wall that slams them or is it like like a bunch of tiny like projectiles that just ping across their like armor and send them like down to the ground? I think a bunch of projectiles. Rushing all at once. All at once, a bunch of these tiny rocks shoot across the room through this tunnel, pinging across the Nihil, hitting their helmets, their arms. You hear their grunts and moans as this wall of small projectile rocks ping against them. And one by one, the Nihil, this hallway of aggressors, thins out. So Lodi used two dark side pips Mm -hmm. are they unconscious or dead unconscious okay as kel runs towards zircon he glances quickly back at lodi he's had trouble trying to figure out her intentions today backrest you want to go next use flesh she doesn't even know yeah uh sure the nihil with the soon to be detonated explosive one of ones hit with the rocks? I think not. I think that most of the Nihil that have been dispatched were closer to the rocks, uh, further away from you, and this Nihil with the detonator on them is closest to the three of you. Clipped to the belt, is that right? Yeah, I think that it's clipped to the Nihil's belt, and when you are a person in that situation, 
somehow it's impossible for you to solve the problem. <laughs> <laughs> totally understandable. Um, so working backwards, I, I need my difficulty adjudicated here, but the difficulty to have set this explosive originally would have been easy. Is it easy to disarm this bomb? There's going to be a threat because it's, it's attached to their belt, and there's going to be a threat because they are your enemy. Perfect. And by threat, you mean setback or just those uh, are... Setback, sorry, for That's my okay. language. I want to remove setback, but I can't remove threat, so I just wanted to ask first. So yeah, so Becros uh, kind of runs right towards the, the blinking soon to be detonated explosive kind of slides to a stop and a crouch and takes the explosive still attached to the belt in both hands and looks at it and I, I can't I can't disarm it oh no panics a little bit and gets to advantage so what he's happens gonna... if you just slice it with your lightsaber what happens if I slice it with my lightsaber Star Wars rules it could either explode if you wanted to, or it could not if you don't want it to. I feel like we have definitely seen in the Clone Wars this exact situation. Uh -huh. And it'd be disarmed by being sliced in half. We also don't know when it's going to explode, which is fun. <laughs> okay. For two advantage, I want to take control of this explosive in some way. Get it off the belt, slice it with a lightsaber, something. I think you can do that. Which one? Can I slice it now, or do I have to wait? I will allow you to slice it. Okay. This is all happening simultaneously. Kel looks back at Lodi, because he can't figure out what is going on today, and he looks back at Bakros, and he sees him fumbling at the belt of this Nihil, who's, I assume, just like trying to swat him away, and also trying to swat the detonator away, and and not not doing what what needs to happen and uh kel's going to use encouraging words which is uh an out of turn passive thing so after an ally fails a check i can suffer a strain to assist that ally's next check as an out of turn incidental so i think becros fails to disarm it and kel just yells back over his shoulder lightsaber lightsaber oh right good idea and so assisted what's your brawn two what's your lightsaber one minus three and three so you're rolling three yellows oh all right i gotta find another yellow this is great this is this is the beauty of the teacher tree yeah it finally comes into play so we're making a lightsaber attack here so it'll be average does it need to be a called shot with two setback as well probably sure yeah i think so but called shot also gets you two boosts oh does it yeah okay and two strain okay i'll happily eat that strain this is a great Heck nice pile. now yeah. the the gm in me <laughs> always dealing with explosives i always flip i don't know if you want to have the same rule doug because we all could die but i don't like people just instantly dying for no reason so yeah that sounds good to me you're going to flip? Wait, wait, wait. I don't want to kill you all. <laughs> okay. Okay. You sure about that? I don't want it. I, if, if I kill you, I don't want you to die from an explosion necessarily. It's your choice. I won't force it on you, but it is a lot of fun at the same time. All right, let's flip one. <laughs> I'm that kind of GM. You can talk me into just about anything. <laughs> all right. So we've got three yellows, three purples. No, I'm sorry. <clears throat> Three yellows, three blues, two black, a purple, and a red. Boy. Come on, land on something. All right. No despairs. So we're not. Wow. Yeah, we're I didn't see nervous. the despair face. It la it, it's the most nerve wracking one, the challenge dice that landed cockeyed. I was like, I have to roll this again. All right, here we go. We get one success and five advantage. Hey, that was a good idea, Kel. Kill gives you the thumbs up as he reaches Zircon. Five advantages. So I definitely activate Sunder, and this explosive is not a problem anymore. So how many advantages does that, leave, does that leave you? So it's what? Two to activate Sunder to do one stage. It's up to Doug. 
But my suggestion would be I'll spend three advantage, make sure this explosive is no longer functioning, leaving two advantage to be boost dice as a distraction to Zircon as Kel approaches him. I'm cool with that. Great. Roll my attack. No despairs. That's a total of one success on Captain Zircon, which is a total of seven damage. It's almost as though time in the last 20 seconds has come to a crawl. All this stuff is happening simultaneously. Kel has eyes around the room, but keeping his, he keeps his focus on the captain, this person that has plagued them for these past weeks. Oh, he's got defense, right? Defense of one. I hate it. That cancels my one success, as usual with this guy. Kel runs up to the captain and using uh, the same move that he used on the Nihil that he disarmed in the other room, he swings his lightsaber up from down, uh, up from below, and the captain sidesteps off to the off to the captain's right, and Kel misses. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. And now it is the Nihil's turn. I think narratively, right after that, Captain Zarkon's going to go for Kel. Yep. Upgrade it once because of my committed force die. Okay, let's see. Wow. Got the got a despair? Got that red in there for the despair? Mm, no. Oh, I also have def- defense of one, so one black. Okay. To cancel out your one success, hopefully. Oh, you do have de- defense? Mm-hmm. It's a wash with the triumph. I think Zircon does the same thing, and uh, Kel sidesteps to his right. They circle each other. <laughs> Not bad. Not bad at all. You Jedi, you think you're so special. You think you have something that the rest of us don't have. The rest of us out in the, out in the galaxy. What is it that you have? A lightsaber? A lightsaber can be taken. That's not it. We have peace. Inner peace. Something you've probably never had. Peace? How can you be peaceful in a galaxy like this? I'm using that triumph to say that Zarkon has actually taken Master Zorias's lightsaber. And upon saying, what do you have other than I but a lightsaber, uh, Zarkon ignites it in the opposite hand of the vibroblade. On igniting this lightsaber, Zarkon sparks the ground a bit in front of Kel. It's more uh, intimidation than anything else. I don't think Kel's intimidated. Are we going to do a check for this? No, I mean, it doesn't matter. I just kind of feel like a lightsaber in the hands of somebody who doesn't know how to use it is more of a danger to the person wielding it than to the person against him. Fair enough. Kel, stop dancing around him and stab him. Kel does not respond to nor do I expect him to. <laughs> Still a lot of minions. Five of them. The minions are finally doing what they're supposed to do. We've got four successes and two advantages. What are they doing? They... That would be nice. These are trained Nihil... <laughs> Train. Pirates. Train. <laughs> train how? Not really uh, trained. Well, by trained, I mean self-taught. Uh, <laughs> they have learned a lot of they have from each other. Slim and wreck punk, ready to go. Experienced. Experience. These are experienced night hill pirates. But they do wield heavy blaster pistols, and this is life or death for them. And they also believe in the cause of the night hill. These blasters are no joke. We've got four successes. They believe that their captain has this Jedi Kel under control. I think they're aiming for Lodi and Bekros, the Jedi that stand between them and also their exit. Which one, though? You can only so pick they one target. All, do they, they all have to aim at one? So that's a minion group. I think it's got to be Lodi because Lodi threw all those rocks. And Well, I'm going to suffer three strain to reflect. So that reduces the damage by three? 
by yeah by three. A eleven damage of fire, head swords Lodi. Minus soak minus three. What am I sm- my soak is two because I have armor robes on. Did you roll a setback for the defense? Nope. It's going to cancel a advantage. So I have defensive quality with my lightsaber and then also defensive with the armored robes. I don't... I have defensive training. So when wielding a lightsaber, I the, my weapon gains the defensive quality with a rating equal to ranks in defensive training. So that's another black die. So there's <laughs> melee defense and range defense one on my robes too. Um, I rolled another black and it's it was a wash. It was nothing. So it's still going to be 11 damage minus your soak. So minus my soak and minus the reflect. So that's five. So 11 minus five equals six. So six damage. That still hurts. Yeah, it's not nothing. You gotta stop getting shot, Lodi. <laughs> when five people shoot, uh, point a gun at you, one of those shots might hit. And one of them does. And where and how does it strike Lodi? In the thigh. Just like right in the lower outside of uh, her thigh, kind of causing her leg to buckle a little bit. So a barrage of blaster bolts fly through this cavern and one of them nicks Lodi's thigh and there's like a winds of pain, but a Jedi knows to fight on. So I think that the round is back to you guys. Um, we all feel Master Sarayas once again reaching out with the force a little stronger this time. And she rolled well enough that we all get one success on our checks. And she is committing the force dice, if you all are okay with this, to have that be for the rest of the encounter. I would like a success for the rest of the encounter, yes. Yep pretty good so since Bekros is already engaged with the second minion group I think that his next priority is to ignite his second lightsaber in its lovely reverse grip and try and defend the the group from the minions so he focuses in on the force and the things that he does to manipulate his lightsaber and imbues them again with concussive and superior and takes a swipe at these guys unless there's anything else that's needed uh, I don't think so I don't want to be shot again <laughs> I don't think it will be a problem we have two success three success and an advantage and a triumph <laughs> neat so okay. uh, I only have one advantage okay but I do get to do the base damage. So we are talking one, two, three, 18, if my math is right. Base do damage. you need advantages to use the second weapon or does it just do it? Oh, you know, you increase the difficulty. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. 18 damage <laughs> and a triumph and an advantage. Okay. I need time to uh, sit on these kinds of rolls think about the loss of the Nihil. It's funny that Kel, the one who has survived all of the encounters so far, is the only one who can't, he's just like not doing anything. <laughs> he's doing plenty. He's just not able to land an attack. Yeah. I mean, we could all be exploded by now. Yeah. Okay. Of the five remaining Nihil, how does Bekros dispatch two of them? Two of them? Yes. Yes. My count is four of them. Oh, wait. Because I ignore all of their soak. Are you using your triumph to take out a, an additional? I think so. It's activating oh. a crit to take out the additional one. So three. So there'd be one left. And I assume Lodi's going to take his gun. I'm surprised it hasn't <laughs> happened already. Does that feel right to you, Doug? It does. I just, <laughs> just want to do the math for my own knowledge base. Sure. I mean, this is like very like prequel territory jedi whoop, 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 whoop. just everybody who is within like a arm's reach is dead don't get engaged with the jedi and uh can you describe how everybody 
who around you is dead is dead now. <laughs> well, Kel made a convincing argument for disarming them. Yes. Well, well Becros did take that to heart because as Becros was about to be exploded, Kel reminded him to use his lightsaber. So out of gratitude. So yeah, so Becros was in a bit of a, a crouch having swiped at this explosive and cut it in half and then saw the minions ignore him and shoot Lodi. And so he ignited the second lightsaber and then in four very quick, precise strikes, steps down the line, disarming each of the four. I, I think he ends almost because he, he's still engaged with the group. So he ends almost face to face with the fifth one who's taken damage, but isn't down and kind of glares at him and the way that the odd Keldor mask looks kind of squinting the eyebrows. You should have surrendered. The night he'll never surrender. You might want to rethink that policy. It turns a knob on it, uh, their helmet and the music just gets louder. <laughs> Doug, I've got a I've got a dark side light side flip for you at the end of this round if you'd like. Hey, I'll take it. Notice bears. Kel and the captain circle each other, doing that sort of uh, Obi Wan, Darth Vader, like testing each other's blades against each other as they wait for the right moment to to strike. And Kel finds the moment and strikes forward again, slashing from left to right. And uh, the Nihil captain tries to parry it. And as he does so, loses grip on the lightsaber, the white blade of Master Zerias' lightsaber, sputtering on Kel's yellow blade. And he knocks it out of his hands with his advantages and no successes once again. What do you think of that? Yeah, Captain Zarkon loses grip of the blade and says, Just a cheap toy! We'll make a million of them with the kyber that we've harvested from your temple. Becros very handily handled that minion group that had just shot at me, and I want to take out Zarkon. I think with just one minion left, Becros has that. Lodi advances down the corridor towards Zircon and Kel, and she kind of reaches out and scoops up the lightsaber when Kel knocks it out of Zircon's hands. Huh. Because I forgot about the success that Zarias gave me, which gives me one success. Okay. Uh, which is seven damage. As Lodi advances on the fight between the two of them, the lightsaber is knocked out of Zircon's hand, and he gives his little speech about toys. And as he gives it, he glances back at the lightsaber, and Kel sees an opportunity and thrusts the lightsaber towards his his side, like right in his midriff, and scores a hit. I advance on the two of you. I believe I'm coming up behind Zircon. <laughs> I don't ignite Master Sarius's uh, lightsaber. I just, I have it. It's safe. I clip it to my head, my belt. And I, uh, oh, I take a swing. What's Lodi's lightsaber? What are you rolling? How many, how many ranks do you have? I have one rank. I think I kind of want to upgrade. I'm going to take my skilled teacher incidental and suffer two strain and you get two additional successes in addition to the one from Zarias. You're trying to give me a critical? Because I'm going to yes. upgrade. Because that's three successes already. But it's against two reds and a black. I would like a boost die because he's not looking at me. That is fine. <laughs> if you if you kill him, I have one stipulation. Before anybody kills this guy, I want to have at least one more like evil doer like <laughs> thing I say. Two threats. Okay. I don't think I saw a despair how many, face. How many successes did you give me? I have one from her. And two from me. It's four in total. That's definitely going to kill this guy. Plus your lightsaber damage. My lightsaber is uh, normal. It's just a basic saber. Six. Yeah. So it's ten? Uh, ten damage total? Yes. Do I get a critical? I don't get a critical. 
I don't know Any what a critical advantages? is. No. No. Okay. If he passes out, he gets a critical. Does that count? Sure. <laughs> the reason why I ask is because I'm wearing that stupid gauntlet. Uh-huh. The gauntlet of justice. So you did 10 damage, is that right? Yes. Kel stabs Zarkon. <laughs> <laughs> you Jedi. You think you own this galaxy. You think you can do whatever you want. You think you can just put these temples everywhere and everyone has to do what you say. I say that order is what we make it. Order is for the people. You may finish me today. You may, you may defeat me, but the Nihil will live on. Now do what you will. Let your temple fall around you. Let your Jedi order crumble. And Lodi kills Lodi, this guy. Yeah. Do you kill him? Or, or maybe not. <laughs> I don't think so. So he's, he's got one Here, like see, diagonal let's slice let's across see. his chest. You should do the opposite diagonal. It's light side. He's going to live. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking, actually, is a diagonal across the back. Oh, okay. Matching the one across his front. Yeah. So Lodi um, has her lightsaber down low, and she just brings it up in a diagonal across his back. And uh, I kind of want I kind of want her to catch him as he falls, but maybe just with the force, not in her arms. That's too personal. So he begins to fall and Lodi reaches out her hand and he just stops mid fall, his arms and legs dangling limply, his head lolling in front of him. Okay. Um, in a lot of ways, I'm going to defer to the rest of you about the conclusion of this. So I think there's silence in this space as these Nihil lay on the floor injured and uh, Becros and Kel move to the hostages as, as Lodi. What, is, what does Lodi do? Oh, Mistress of Justice, holding this guy in the Light center of the space. has already determined he's going to live. Uh, I had already rolled that he lives. But, but, he passed out, so you should probably roll that critical. Am I rolling a d100? 77. That's and then what, is your, what does your arm do? What does your arm do? I don't know. <laughs> oh, you roll a force die equal to your force rating. So, one force die? Yep. It's two light side pips. Okay, we don't increase that critical at all. What was it, a 77? Yeah. Oh, man. 77 is overpowered. The target leaves themselves open, and the attacker may immediately attempt another free attack against them using the same pool. You have him. It would be so nope. easy to just end it. Light no. side pip. Okay. Nope. Great. The light side finally wins out. <laughs> <laughs> I think Becaros and Kel tend to the hostages, uh, freeing them from their restraints, seeing what they can do for Zarias, and from deep in the caves we hear a, a rhythmic pounding and then a yell as Horbo comes around the corner his light pike lit ready for battle I think he does a I think being a light pike user there's always a bit of like an extra unnecessary <laughs> <laughs> like anytime you step into the room <laughs> an unnecessary uh -huh. spin yeah. Yep. He leaps into the into the view, and I think he sees his master injured there. Master Zarias, are are you well? Are you safe? <laughs> she is very injured. Can you carry her back to the temple? Of course. I'm afraid we might have some Nihil back in their ships to take care of, and there were those other ones that flew away, following the vectors. Lodi sort of stands over Zircon, one hand holding him aloft and the other hand holding her saber, and the, her saber is still ignited, and it shakes ever so slightly as her hand trembles because there's been such a struggle within her between the light side and the dark side, but she feels this comforting calm that smooths out the tremor in her hand. 
as the light side sort of envelops her and comforts her. Mm -hmm. And she extinguishes her lightsaber and places it on her belt and turns to uh, Kel, who's talking about the Nihil still on the surface, and says, All we have to do is show them their defeated leader, and I believe they'll fall in line. They keep saying they never surrender, though. Mm -hmm. This might be a little trickier than we thought. Maybe we should call uh, your friend Mina, Cloud City, get the O'Donnells involved. Well, we have to get to the surface first for that. Uh, do we take all these guys with us? They're just going to wake up eventually. I think that the three of you gather up their blasters. You uncuff a few of the hostages. You see Captain, Captain Sorpin. Thank you again for rescuing us. We will escort these Nihil back to the surface. It is nice to not be on the receiving end of a blaster for once. And Glido grabs a blaster and isn't very confident in holding it, but follows alongside. As the group's heading out, Becros calls out to Horvo. Hey, Horvo, um, just one second. He kind of waits till they're at the back of the pack and says, I know, uh, you said you'd never forget that snack I, I gave you not too long ago. Keep, keep that in mind, because uh, I have some bad news about your garden. Wait, the garden? Yeah, the, okay. the Nihil ruined it. They poured something <laughs> all over it. I knew they would. Thank you. Thank you for telling me, and thank you for doing so in a time of victory. I appreciate that, Becros. Yeah, I just wanted you to know that we're good. Oh, it's always good to have friends. Indeed it is. The group the group makes it out of the caves. You're so lucky that Lodi is too wrapped up in her own turmoil, turmoils right now. She would uncover that lie so fast. <laughs> I think as they exit, Kel... Uh, approaches Lodi. What was she holding her lightsaber in the gauntlet hand? Uh, yeah, it's her dominant hand, of course. Yeah, and Kel says, "I really think you should take that off. The council will be interested in seeing it and hearing about this place that you found." Lodi kind of looks down at her hand and she sort of feels it, and it just feels strange. I don't know if I can, at least not today. I can help you try. There's more important things to take care of first. Kel looks at Lodi and is quiet for a moment and nods as they find their way through this maze of tunnels, out through the path that Kel knew, the one that didn't lead them uh, through the heart of the virgins. I think we exit into the jungle. The I think the sound of the jungle is refreshing and almost like entering into a different vergence it buzzes around you and you feel kind of free of this trapped space kel gathers the younglings while lodi and bakros head back to the temple horbo and his master following close behind the nihil might be dealt with but there's work to be done messes to be cleaned and more threats to be assessed the Nihil might be dealt with, but the dark side is still there. The suns begin to set over Bava's tall trees, painting the sky orange and red and purple. In the distance, the red mesas loom and a vapor trail crosses the sky. The distant sound of engines rumbles as a settler ship soars towards Spaceport City. The Kidos and insects go silent. A flock of birds takes off from a tall, tall tree into the air. A thorny vine whips through the air, grabbing a bird, leaving a puff of feathers behind, slowly drifting down through the cooling air. Thank you for listening to Path of the Storm. Kel was played by Mark Eberhardt. Lodi was played by Eric Goodwitch. Becros was played by Andrew Armstrong. Captain Zircon and Horbo were played by Doug from Coruscant Nights and The Other Place. MBD44 was played by Chris from The Other Place. Mina the Ugnaught was played by Joy from The Other Place. Wootrid was played by Ben from Coruscant Knights. Clap Tormer was played by Adam from Force Majeure. Din was played by Sam from the Starbirds podcast. Master Zorias was played by Crystal from Dicey Cantina. Captain Sorpin was played by James from University of Coruscant. 
Galito and the Chatter Fan Mechanic were played by Nikki from Coruscant Nights. Ruddy was played by Cade. The Nihil were played by AJ from The Other Place. Zack from Tales of the Outer Rim. Dwayne from Flight Risk. Paul, Chaos Mod, and Sarah from Coruscant Nights. Path of the Storm was produced by Nightcast Creative with Dicey Cantina and Eric Goodwitch. We will return in two weeks with our Q&A and Morality Table Talk episodes.